We're going to take a brief moment to discuss effective e-communication. Emailing is a commonplace thing within our educational system and our schools nowadays. But what we really need to think about is when we're using email for collaboration, in what ways is it effective and in what ways might it not be? We're going to discuss several different things related to effectiveness for the educational environment. We're going to talk about convenience, factual information, problem solving and issues of conflict, cultural or socioeconomic issues, and legal issues. One of the greatest things about email is its convenience. When you can communicate really effectively with several people at once, say blasting out some information about a meeting to a group of people, or you know that when you have professionals that are all linked to a specific email, school email account, that you can effectively reach them. It's easy for them to organize the information once they get it, and they could, can get that information when it's most convenient to them. Email is a great way to communicate details and uh, pieces of information that people especially want to reference again. You can be assured that the information was sent and you can look in your sent box and see what you sent, when you sent it, and make sure that you had the details correct whenever there is um, maybe a conflict or some confusion. Problem solving and conflict resolution though, email can be kind of difficult to use as a communication tool for dealing with those issues. Um, it's not necessarily timely depending on who's receiving the email and how quickly they receive it or how quickly they check their inbox. For serious discussions or for brainstorming, it can be a very slow process to go back and forth. When you're dealing with an entire group, say you're blasting out an email asking for feedback, brainstorming on something with an entire group, it also can be a very slow process and it can be a process where you've got people replying to all where you didn't intend that or not replying to all when you did intend that and you've got kind of emails bouncing back and all over the place when having a uh, group discussion in a face-to-face -face mode or a phone conference mode might be an easier way to get the information that you need. The other thing that is limited with email is making immediate corrections when you see that someone is mistaking your information, correcting it right then and there. They're not getting the benefit of your body language or inflections. That is all lost with email. We also have cultural and socioeconomic issues to consider. First of all, when we're dealing with certain populations, we're not assured that all families have the technological capabilities of receiving email. Therefore, if that's your primary mode of communication to your parents, um, whether as a special ed teacher or a general ed teacher, it is putting a limit on your communication with those families that don't have that. And sometimes those are the families you need to communicate with most, and you are putting them at a disadvantage by doing that. The other thing is that with cultural backgrounds, they're not all created equal where email is concerned. The expectation of one culture over another when uh, communicating by email can be very different. For example, one culture may be very formal, uh, such as the, the Asian culture may be very formal in how they address and how they speak within an email um, and how they sign their emails and whatnot as compared to some European cultures, maybe very short to the point, almost um, almost very short and to the point of maybe coming across rudely. Um, so there are different, different aspects and you need to be able to read those aspects when receiving email from families and look at their tone, look at their culture and how that's coming across and reply in kind so that you're not either being offensive or coming across with the perception of being rude or um, having some sort of uh, emotional intonation to your email that you didn't anticipate. One of the biggest things that I can caution you about, and general educators, this is for you as well, 
are the implications of legal issues arising. Email is very permanent. It's a written record. It can be used in court against you. Um, make sure that what you have to say is in alignment with a student's legal plan. If you're saying one thing and the plan is saying another, or you're alluding to services, or you're alluding to the lack of services, or that you are declining services before that has been officially recorded on any particular plan, you know, this can be used against you as far as the parent can say that you have already determined services or they were not part of that process or that you are predetermined in some way, shape, or form or that you're not following their plan or a million different things. Um, it's not the best way to discuss confidential or sensitive information just as in a course I will tell students if you have personal information to share with me please email me um, as opposed to putting it on the discussion board sometimes when people do that I'll call them and I'll say let's discuss this because it's not easy to read somebody's email and their emotions and their needs and get that immediate feedback um, it can also <laughs> put you at risk for being in the wrong hands. I know that I get several emails from district and school personnel pretty consistently that have this confidential, if you are receiving this information and this is not for you, you know, um, please disregard, please, you know, delete. Well, that only gets you so far. Making sure it never gets in the wrong hands in the first place is the better option. And, you know, we often can make a, a wrong keystroke and all of a sudden it's distributed to the wrong person. I know that I had that happen or actually another colleague had that happen and I was fortunate enough to catch it and it went to sensitive student information went to a wrong person um, and it turned out okay but you know it's it's very easy to do that with email. Now on the bright side when you do have some legal issues going on it also captures the parents written comments in permanent record um, and sometimes knowing when you communicated with someone how you communicated with them the information you gave them you know especially when it's factual meetings um, types of arrangements that can be helpful for legal purposes as well so it can work against you and I caution you about that but also it can be a permanent written, written record if there's a dispute about you know agreements that were made or meetings that were um, scheduled or rescheduled or, or whatever the case may be. One of the things that I've included in this little mini PowerPoint is a sample communication. So on the next slide, and you may have to have it full screen to be able to read this, this is a real email communication from a real parent to a real teacher. And I did block out any um, information that would would tell you who it was, but um, I don't consider it a good example or a bad example, but I want you to look at it through the eyes of an educator who's concerned about the email issues that we talked about, and I want you to evaluate how well you feel the teacher did in responding to that parent. Um, what What does the parent's original email tell you not only about maybe the cultural aspects or the expectations of that email communication or the content in what was needed, um, the sensitivity of it, the um, any of those things and how well do you feel that the teacher responded to that um, and anything that you would have done differently. Now this isn't something I expect you to turn in. I will put a piece on the discussion board in case you as an option want to just you know, let your colleagues and your peers in this class know how you felt about it, but this is purely for um, your own sake and in thinking about those issues. So at this point, I'll give you time to read this email. You can pause the presentation at this point and um, read it through and make some considerations of your own. Thank you so much.